Hey, good morning. Good to be here on a Friday. Yeah, Friday. <laughs> uh, you know, I say this every week, but it feels like Friday comes around way too quickly. <laughs> I'm like, gee whiz. Not only is the summer speeding by, but the year is speeding by. It's just amazing. You know, I, I started this summer with the intent, uh, the intention of... Um, savoring this summer i don't know i just felt like it was something i wanted to do right and i've, I've tried i really have <laughs> but gosh it just feels like things are whizzing whizzing along here and uh yeah what are you gonna do you know we we live each day we walk out each moment with uh the knowledge that we're walking with him he's in us we're in him and it is what it is right so we uh we get to enjoy you know the the times and the seasons <laughs> so but it's good to be with you on this beautiful friday we've got a beautiful uh day and and weekend actually coming up here in uh, in the uh, east coast and um, hopefully it'll be that way for you wherever you are but if not you know well that's the way it goes too so <laughs> But um, looking forward to a weekend of getting some things done. Um, I just remembered I I will be I will be sharing tomorrow morning in Cranford at uh, at the launch, which is uh, my good friend Gary Fishman's ministry that uh, happens over there at the Harvest Training Center in Cranford, and uh, that's at ten o'clock. So if you're in the area, you wanna you wanna come and hear me in person if this is not enough for you <laughs> ay, ay, ay. every day you see me who wants to see me again right i understand but um let's say good morning to this awesome breakfast club look at all you guys just piling in here wow <laughs> that is so cool jackie and jane and ted uh collie millie and jennifer uh, Donna and D, oh my goodness, Clara, <clears throat> Elaine, Michael, good to see each and every one of you. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. So I was all set to move on to the next section here in Matthew 16, but <laughs> as I started to think about it this morning, I really felt that the Lord wanted me to just kind of continue the conversation that we started yesterday surrounding uh, this statement that Jesus made here in uh, Matthew 16 and verse 19. Um, Peter has just made the awesome and life-changing revelation. He spoke that saying that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so you know, in response to that, Jesus basically lays out for his disciples and for us who we are and what we're called to do here on this earth, right? He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I'm giving you the keys to the joint. You have authority now, right? He says, whatever you shall bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven and whatever you shall loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. And I unpacked a lot of this yesterday. If you missed yesterday, you want to go back and listen to that one, right? But the, the, the upshot of this, of course, is that with this authority that we've been given, we are now tasked with the responsibility of expanding and extending this kingdom of God throughout the whole earth, right? I love the prophecies in the Old Testament where it says that it is the knowledge of the glory of God that will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. That's the heart of the Father. He wants every single person alive, you know, to know, not just to hear about or, you know, be told, but actually to experience His glory for them and in them, right? That's what he wants. And so having the kingdom of God be expanded and extended so that the people who come into 
that sphere into that realm can have an encounter with our Heavenly Father. I mean, that's just an amazing thing, but that's what <laughs> that's what we're called to do. And so, you know, I mentioned yesterday that this issue of binding is really all about declaring that what His will is, what is actually being done in heaven, needs to be happening here and now. And if there's thing, if there are things here that aren't found in heaven, well, we we got to do something about that. And of course, we understand that anything that's going on here on earth that is not allowed is illegal in the kingdom of God. Well, the only reason why that's happening is because the enemy is functioning. The enemy has gained access into people and into their geographic location. And so, you know, in our representation of the kingdom, we're going into these places, into people's lives and saying, you know what? God's already made it clear what he wants, and we're here to enforce that. And we're not trying to force people to, you know, we're not cramming this down people's throats, in other words. When I use the word enforce, it doesn't, at least I hope it doesn't give you the idea, you know, that we're coming in there with guns blazing and saying, you better surrender your heart to Jesus and, you know, submit to the kingdom of God. No, no, no. <laughs> there is another religion that operates that way. We don't. You know, I entitled today's broadcast that we are God's liberation army of love. Because, see, that is the essence of this thing. We go in with a heart of love, with his heart of love, to say to people, wow, i got some good news for you. You don't have to continue to live in the condition that you're in, whatever that condition is. If it's a sickness, a disease, an infirmity, an addiction, you know, uh, spiritual oppression from, from the enemy, whatever that negative condition is. The good news is Jesus has done something about that. He, he has brought deliverance and liberation through his sacrifice on the cross. And so we're, we're bringing that powerful love into people's lives to say, guess what? <laughs> God really does know about you and he knows about your situation and he cares. He wants to set you free. And so, you know, as I read some of these these scriptures that talk about that, huh, it just, my heart burns <laughs> because I want to see it happening. You know, we go back to the awesome prophecy in Isaiah 42, where the father is bragging on his son. He says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. That's Jesus I've put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not be disheartened or crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. What is that? You know, the justice of God is now in effect in the kingdom of God because the justice of God is he has declared that we are not guilty through the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid the penalty for sin. He took upon himself the sin of every single person, past, present, and future. And because of that, God was able to say, not guilty. And so, what God had in mind from the beginning, which the enemy totally has screwed up, is now able to be put in place. That's the justice of God. The justice of God is, you have been set free from the sentence of death and everything that goes along with that. Everything that, that was part of your guilty verdict before Christ, now you no longer have to pay that penalty, you see. 
That's the justice of God. In other words, everything that he wanted for us, everything that he desired for the human race, which we get a glimpse of, by the way, in the uh, Genesis account in the Garden of Eden. Look at that story and realize that is what the Father wanted from the beginning. Well, now, now that's possible. So when it talks about Jesus establishing justice, that's what we're talking about. Saying to people, hey, you know what? It is not right. It is not good that you remain under this nonsense of the enemy because Jesus paid the price for you to be free. And so we're here to, to declare the justice of God in your life, that all this was paid for, you get to be set free. So if, you know, that person happens to be a bruised reed where they've really got knocked around in life and the enemy's really messed with them in, in, in many ways, well, huh, we bring healing. Or maybe they're like that dimly burning wick and they are so hopeless and in, so depressed that they would, they would you know, end it if not for the fact that we come and say, don't give up. Don't give up hope because God, God is on your side. You know, here's the shocking thing. Because of what Jesus did, this is going to blow your mind. Because of what Jesus did, we deserve everything that God wants for us. We deserve to be free. We deserve to be healed. Not because of anything we did. We don't, oh, if it was based on us, <laughs> that's laughable. But it isn't. It's based on what Jesus did. So, because he took care of everything, everybody deserves to get all that the Father desires. And that's what we're talking about. We come in as that liberation army of love. Remember, Jesus said to love one another as I have loved you. He's the one that loves us first so that we then can take that love and extend it to other people, right? We're out there loving people, accepting them for who they are, where they are, you know, warts and all, with all their issues and, and, and problems and whatever else. We just love on them because that's what God did and does for us, right? How can we not? How can we not love others when he has loved us so well? And you know what? If wherever you are in your life, if you've not experienced yet the fullness of the Father's love for you, that's okay, because he wants that for you. And there's a way to get there. Absolutely. And I know there are many, many reasons why even God's own children don't experience the fullness of his love. And if we don't have that, then we just basically dump on people out of our own hurts, out of our own problems, right? So we want to come into that place where we are whole and healed and, and you know, operating in the fullness of our true identity, of our true nature as those who are new creations, as those who have Christ in us, that we're one with Jesus. And so that's the process that we're all on and you can get the help that you need if you're struggling to get there, right? Reach out. I can put you in touch with people or you can come and we'll minister to you in person. It's, it's an awesome thing, right? So as we are going forth representing this amazing Father and this amazing kingdom, we get to set people free from the things that the enemy has been been doing in their life whether it's a generational thing whether it's something that they themselves got into you know it's interesting that uh, in the prophecy that Jesus spoke when he got up and, and and read from Isaiah in the synagogue he talks about two different sets of people right he talks about prisoners right and he talks about captives now those are both negative conditions to be in, but they're two very different conditions. If you're a prisoner, it's because you did something that gave an authority 
structure or an authority figure the right to sentence you and put you in that prison, right? So that speaks of the things that we do that have consequences that affect us negatively, okay? We understand that there are things we can do if I, you know, was a chain smoker, smoking, you know, multiple packs of cigarettes a day, and I end up with, with lung cancer, well, that's nobody's fault but mine. You know, if I do stupid things, you know, go out and, and rob a bank or whatever, you know, I'm going to have consequences. Yet Jesus said, I came to set those prisoners free. <laughs> Do you realize how far the grace of God extends? That even if I am responsible for my own mess, which I am, when I make stupid decisions, right, and end up having these consequences, even those consequences can be ameliorated, they can be reversed through the grace of God, through the power of God. And so we can come and announce that to people and say, hey, uh, yeah, you messed up, but it's not the last word of your story, okay? And many of you have testimonies of God doing that for you, and you can tell people about that. You can tell people, I was X, Y, and Z, but God delivered me, He healed me, and I can now tell you He'll do the same thing for you, right? And then you've got captives. Now, captives are folks that have been um, affected by others through no fault of their own because of generational issues where in your family line there were people who engaged in perhaps occultic kinds of things that you now are suffering the consequences of that or there was abusive things going on on many different levels uh, or you just had a family that was completely dysfunctional and it messed you up there are many of these kinds of things that that people that we all experience that we didn't choose this is just this was my life this is my life well jesus says i came to set captives free and that's what we get to do as well to announce to people like that and say oh man i got good news for you <laughs> jesus is has set you free he has paid the price you don't have to live like this any longer so knowing that we can bring this level of freedom into people's lives that we ourselves it has to start with us right we we have to be willing to confront the issues that we still have you know we get saved we we rejoice in this relationship with the lord but <clears throat> It's not an instantaneous transformation. Well, I would that it was. You know, wouldn't that be nice? You know, it's like you get saved and immediately, bam, you're fully like Christ. No, it doesn't work that way. So we've got to be responsible to recognize the, the areas in our lives where we don't yet look like Jesus. You know, that's the heart of the Father. That's his desire. And for many of us, we're not there yet. And that's okay. We're all in process. But if we will be responsible, if we will take, you know, that mature uh, standpoint and say, I want to be free. And Lord, I see this, I see that, you know, I see issues in my life where I'm still in prison because of things I did. I see things in my life where I'm still being held captive because of, you know, the, the environmental factors that my family line or whatever. Let's deal with that. Let's get healed. Let's get freed so that we can be even more effective in representing him and his kingdom because that's what it's all about to go and love people to that extent where you don't give up on them you don't walk away from them because they're difficult yeah they're difficult but maybe you <laughs> so are you <laughs> you know what i find i find that that the people we have the hardest time with are in some ways similar to us in other words, their, their weaknesses are kind of similar to ours, and we react to that. You know, we, that's not always the case, but I, many times I see 
in my life how it was that way where I would, you know, I would just have this this thing with somebody and and if, when I really stepped back and real and analyzed it, I realized that, huh? So they're kind of like me. <laughs> it's like. Ooh, <laughs> that's an interesting light when it goes on. But the point is, is that we we have this capacity now to to love people unconditionally in the same way that we're loved unconditionally. And so to be this liberation army of love, that's what it looks like. You know, that we can go forth, um, we can do what Jesus did. I love the the, the verse in, in Acts 10, 38, where it talks about how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Well, guess what? We can make that same statement about ourselves. We, we can say, Lord, Thank you that you anoint me with the Holy Spirit and with power so that I can go about doing good and heal all who are oppressed by the devil because you are with me. <laughs> I love making declarations like that, you know, where you take these promises or these, these scriptures that are about Jesus and realize that, oh, this now applies to me. I can say this about me because I'm one with Christ. There's no separation now between me and Jesus. And so what he was and is capable of, so am I. Because he's in me and I'm in him, right? His potential becomes my potential. And that revelation, once that really starts to take hold in you, where now you no longer see yourself as separate from him. That is one of the biggest challenges that most Christians have. We continue to live in a, in a place or a posture of false separation where we just kind of still see ourselves as, well, I'm here and you're there. Yeah, I know that you're in my heart, but, but I still feel like you're there and I'm here. <laughs> we, we, we tend to live like that. And so one of the major areas of reformation and transformation that's happening in the lives of God's children in this season is learning that we are never separated from him, that we every moment of every day we are walking one with Christ. And because of that, you see, the freedom that we have, ah, oh, it's mind blowing. It is mind blowing. And, and it'll grow. The, the understanding of this will grow as you press into it. You know, as you become more intentional, I mean, maybe, maybe you have to do something as that seems as silly as putting up post-it notes where you can see them on a frequent basis where they say you and Jesus are one or me and Jesus are one <laughs> you know <laughs> Christ in me the hope of glory whatever phrases or scriptures or words resonate in your heart you know the, these are the kinds of practical things that we can do that will accelerate our growth process and help us to really you know get past the mental limitations, the mindset limitations that, that we've been dealing with in our lives. If we'll do things like that, right? Oh my goodness. You will have no problem developing this vision in your heart and mind where you see yourself being Jesus to the world around you. That any situation that arises that you happen to be there, hmm, something you want me to do? <laughs> right and immediately you will know yeah go pray for that person or yeah just stay here and pray for them right he'll show you he does it all the time it's amazing <laughs> and so i i want to just encourage you with this we have so so much going for us now 
and that that we're learning and, and it's opening up to us <laughs> and and as we grow in this we we literally will become what he says we already are but we'll we'll walk it out that we are that liberation army of love so let's go have some fun with that okay <laughs> oh my goodness let's see who we've got going on here today my gosh we've got so many of you guys that have jumped in here uh where did i leave off <laughs> i always have problems going back to where i left off here okay i think well cindy um good morning to you doug how are you boy it's been a while um who else bill Hey, Randy, how are you? Good to see you this morning. Susan and Allison, good to have you guys along. Thank you. I appreciate so much that you took a little time to hang out with me. And to those of you that share this video, thank you so very much. I appreciate having uh, people find out about our little breakfast club. And of course, feel free to reach out, email or Facebook message if you'd like to chat or if you have some questions. I'd love to hear from you. Have an awesome, awesome weekend. I really pray you get a chance to love on somebody and really let them experience just how awesome our Papa is. <laughs> and I look forward to being back with you Monday, 8.30 Eastern. All right. Have a great weekend.